Hello, welcome back to Meditating the Word. My name is Cherie. I'm your host and fellow traveler on this journey through the Bible in a year. Whether you've been reading the Bible for years, or this is your first time to read it from Genesis to Revelation, I'm glad to have you with us. Now let's jump into today's passage. We're six months in. I'm proud of you for hanging in there. This is day 183. Today we're starting the second book of Kings, reading the first four chapters. I'm reading from the World English Bible. Let's get started. The second book of Kings, chapters 1 through 4. Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. Ahaziah fell down through the lattice in his upper room that was in Samaria and was sick. So he sent messengers and said to them, Go, inquire of Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron, whether I will recover of this sickness. But the Lord's angel said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria and tell them, Is it because there is no god in Israel that you go to inquire of Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron? Now therefore the Lord says, You will not come down from the bed where you have gone up, but you will surely die. Then Elijah departed. The messengers returned to him, and he said to them, Why is it that you have returned? They said to him, A man came to meet us and said to us, Go return to the king who sent you, and tell him, The Lord says, Is it because there is no God in Israel that you send to inquire of Baal Zabub, the god of Ekron? Therefore you will not come down from the bed where you have gone up, but you will surely die. He said to them, What kind of man was he who came up to meet you and told you these words? They answered him, He was a hairy man, and wearing a leather belt around his waist. He said, It's Elijah the Tishbite. Then the king sent a captain of fifty with his fifty to him. He went up to him, and behold, he was sitting on the top of the hill. He said to him, Man of God, the king has said, Come down. Elijah answered to the captain of fifty, If I am a man of God, then let fire come down from the sky and consume you and your fifty. Then fire came down from the sky and consumed him and his fifty. Again he sent to him another captain of fifty with his fifty. He answered him, Man of God, the king has said, Come down quickly. Elijah answered them, If I am a man of God, then let fire come down from the sky and consume you and your fifty. Then God's fire came down from the sky and consumed him and his fifty. Again, he sent the captain of a third fifty with his fifty. The third captain of fifty went up and came and fell on his knees before Elijah and begged him and said to him, Man of God, please, let my life and the life of these fifty of your servants be precious in your sight. Behold, fire came down from the sky and consumed the last two captains of fifty with their fifties, but now, Let my life be precious in your sight. The Lord's angel said to Elijah, Go down with him, don't be afraid of him. Then he arose and went down with him to the king. He said to him, The Lord says, Because you have sent messengers to inquire of Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron, is it because there is no god in Israel to inquire of his word? Therefore, you will not. Come down from the bed where you have gone up, but you will surely die. So he died according to the Lord's word, which Elijah had spoken. Jehoram began to reign in his place in the second year of Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, because he had no son. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaziah, which he did, aren't they written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? When the Lord was about to take Elijah up by a whirlwind into heaven, Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Please wait here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. 
the sons of the prophets who were at Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? He said, Yes, I know it. Hold your peace. Elijah said to him, Elisha, please wait here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. He said, As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The sons of the prophets who were at Jericho came to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? He answered, Yes, I know it. Hold your peace. Elijah said to him, Please wait here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. He said, As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. Then they both went on. Fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood opposite them at a distance, and they both stood by the Jordan. Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the waters, and they were divided here and there, so that they both went over on dry ground. When they had gone over, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please, let a double portion of your spirit be on me. He said, You have asked a hard thing. If you see me when I am taken from you, it will be so for you, but if not, it will not be so. As they continued on and talked, behold, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated them, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. He saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. He also took up Elijah's mantle that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. He took Elijah's mantle that fell from him and struck the waters and said, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? When he also had struck the waters, they were divided apart, and Elisha went over. When the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho facing him saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. They came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. They said to him, See now, there are with your servants fifty strong men. Please let them go and seek your master. Perhaps the Lord's Spirit has taken him up and put him on some mountain or into some valley. He said, Don't send them. When they urged him until he was ashamed, he said, Send them. Therefore they sent fifty men, and they searched for three days, but didn't find him. They came back to him while he stayed at Jericho, and he said to them, Didn't I tell you don't go? The men of the city said to Elisha, Behold, please, the situation of this city is pleasant, as my Lord sees, but the water is bad, and the land is barren. He said, Bring me a new jar, and put salt in it. Then they brought it to him. He went out to the spring of the waters and threw salt into it and said, The Lord says, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from there any more death or barren wasteland. So the waters were healed to this day, according to Elisha's word, which he spoke. As he went up from there to Bethel, as he was going up by the way, some youths came out of the city and mocked him, and said to him, Go up, you baldy, go up, you baldy. He looked behind him and saw them, and cursed them in the Lord's name. Then two female bears came out of the woods, and mauled forty-two of those youths. He went from there to Mount Carmel, and from there he returned to Samaria. Now Jehoram the son of Ahab began to reign over Israel in Samaria in the eighteenth year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and reigned twelve years. He did that which was evil in the Lord's sight, but not like his father and like his mother. For he put away the pillar of Baal that his father had made. Nevertheless, he held to the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, with which he made Israel to sin. 
he didn't depart from them. Now Mesha, king of Moab, was a sheep breeder, and he supplied the king of Israel with one hundred thousand lambs and the wool of one hundred thousand rams. But when Ahab was dead, the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. King Jehoram went out of Samaria at that time and mustered all Israel. He went and sent to Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, saying, The king of Moab has rebelled against me. Will you go up with me against Moab to battle? He said, I will go up. I am as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. Then he said, Which way shall we go up? Jehoram answered, The way of the wilderness of Edom. So the king of Israel went with the king of Judah and the king of Edom, and they marched for seven days along a circuitous route. There was no water for the army or for the animals that followed them. The king of Israel said, Alas, for the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. But Jehoshaphat said, Isn't there a prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of the Lord by him? One of the king of Israel's servants answered, Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who poured water on the hands of Elijah, is here. Jehoshaphat said, The Lord's word is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Edom, went down to him. Elisha said to the king of Israel, What have I to do with you? Go to the prophets of your father and to the prophets of your mother. The king of Israel said to him, No, for the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. Elisha said, As the Lord of armies lives, before whom I stand, surely, were it not that I respect the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not look toward you nor see you. But now, bring me a musician. When the musician played, the Lord's hand came on him. He said, The Lord says, Make this valley full of trenches. For the Lord says you will not see wind, neither will you see rain, yet that valley will be filled with water, and you will drink, both you and your livestock and your other animals. This is an easy thing in the Lord's sight. He will also deliver the Moabites into your hand. You shall strike every fortified city and every choice city, and shall fell every good tree, and stop all springs of water and mar every good piece of land with stones. In the morning, about the time of offering the sacrifice, behold, water came by the way of Edom, and the country was filled with water. Now when all the Moabites heard that the kings had come up to fight against them, they gathered themselves together, all who were able to put on armor, young and old, and stood on the border. They rose up early in the morning, and the sun shone on the water, And the Moabites saw the water opposite them as red as blood. They said, This is blood. The kings are surely destroyed, and they have struck each other. Now, therefore, Moab, to the plunder. When they came to the camp of Israel, the Israelites rose up and struck the Moabites, so that they fled before them, and they went forward into the land, attacking the Moabites. They beat down the cities and on every good piece of land each man cast his stone, and filled it. They also stopped all the springs of water, and cut down all the good trees, until in Kir Haraseth all that was left was its stones. However, the men armed with slings went around it and attacked it. When the king of Moab saw that the battle was too severe for him, he took with him seven hundred men who drew a sword to break through to the king of Edom but they could not. Then he took his oldest son, who would have reigned in his place, and offered him for a burnt offering on the wall. There was great wrath against Israel, and they departed from him and returned to their own land. Now a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. You know that your servant feared the Lord. Now the creditor has come to take for himself my two children to be slaves. Elisha said to her, What should I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? She said, 
Your servant has nothing in the house except a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow empty containers from all your neighbors. Don't borrow just a few containers. Go in and shut the door on you and your sons, and pour oil into all those containers, and set aside those which are full. So she went from him, and shut the door on herself and on her sons. They brought the containers to her, and she poured oil. When the containers were full, she said to her son, Bring me another container. He said to her, There isn't another container. Then the oil stopped flowing. Then she came and told the man of God. He said, Go, sell the oil and pay your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. One day, Elisha went to Shinem, where there was a prominent woman, and she persuaded him to eat bread. So it was that as often as he passed by, he turned in there to eat bread. She said to her husband, See now, I perceive that this is a holy man of God who passes by us continually. Please, let's make a little room on the roof. Let's set a bed, a table, a chair, and a lampstand for him there. When he comes to us, he can stay there. One day he came there, and he went to the room and lay there. He said to Gehazi, his servant, Call this Shunammite. When he had called her, she stood before him. He said to him, Say now to her, Behold, you have cared for us with all this care. What is to be done for you? Would you like to be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. He said, What then is to be done for her? Gehazi answered, Most certainly she has no son, and her husband is old. He said, Call her. When he had called her, she stood in the door. He said, At this season next year you will embrace a son. She said, No, my lord, you man of God, do not lie to your servant. The woman conceived and bore a son at that season, when the time came around as Elisha had said to her, When the child was grown, one day he went out to his father to the reapers. He said to his father, My head, my head. He said to his servant, Carry him to his mother. When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees until noon and then died. She went up and laid him on the man of God's bed and shut the door on him and went out. She called to her husband and said, Please, Send me one of the servants and one of my donkeys, that I may run to the man of God and come again. He said, Why would you want to go to him today? It's not a new moon or a Sabbath. She said, It's all right. Then she saddled a donkey and said to her servant, Drive and go forward. Don't slow down for me unless I ask you to. So she went and came to the man of God to Mount Carmel. When the man of God saw her afar off, he said to Gehazi, his servant, Behold, there is the Shunammite. Please now run to meet her and ask her, Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with your child? She answered, It is well. When she came to the man of God, to the hill, she caught hold of his feet. Gehazi came near to thrust her away, but the man of God said, Leave her alone. For her soul is troubled within her, and the Lord has hidden it from me, and has not told me. Then she said, Did I ask you for a son, my Lord? Didn't I say, Do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, Tuck your cloak into your belt, take my staff in your hand, and go your way. If you meet any man, don't greet him, and if anyone greets you, don't answer him again. Then lay my staff on the child's face. The child's mother said, As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So he arose and followed her. Gehazi went ahead of them and laid the staff on the child's face, but there was no voice and no hearing. Therefore he returned to meet him and told him, The child has not awakened. When Elisha had come into the house, behold, The child was dead and lying on his bed. He went in, therefore, and shut the door on them both and prayed to the Lord. He went up and lay on the child, 
and put his mouth on his mouth, and his eyes on his eyes, and his hands on his hands. He stretched himself on him, and the child's flesh grew warm. Then he returned and walked in the house once back and forth. Then he went up and stretched himself out on him. Then the child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. He called Gehazi and said, Call this Shunammite. So he called her. When she had come into him, he said, Take up your son. Then she went in, fell at his feet, and bowed herself to the ground. Then she picked up her son and went out. Elisha came again to Gilgal. There was a famine in the land, and the sons of the prophets were sitting before him, and he said to his servant, Get the large pot and boil stew for the sons of the prophets. One went out into the field to gather herbs, and found a wild vine, and gathered a lapful of wild boards from it, and came and cut them up into the pot of stew, for they didn't recognize them. So they poured out for the men to eat. As they were eating some of the stew, they cried out and said, Man of God, there is death in the pot, and they could not eat it. But he said, Then bring meal. He threw it into the pot and said, Serve it to the people that they may eat. And there was nothing harmful in the pot. A man from Baal Shalisha came and brought the man of God some bread of the first fruits, twenty loaves of barley, and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, Give to the people that they may eat. His servant said, What? Should I set this before a hundred men? But he said, Give it to the people that they may eat, for the Lord says they will eat and will have some left over. So he set it before them, and they ate and had some left over, according to the Lord's word. Father God, it's thrilling to read about Elisha's double portion of the blessing that was on Elijah. And we see lessons in those miracles for us, too. In the Battle of Moab, we're reminded that the battle isn't ours, it's yours. And it has already been won. In the story of the Shunammite woman, we see how important our words are. Although her son was dead, she insisted that it is well. And so it was. May we have the same faith, Father and the ability to guard our words and to not say what we see around us, but what your word says. Amen. Well, there we have it. Another chapter in our journey through the Bible. It's not always easy to understand, but remember, it's not a race, and each word we read is a seed planted in our hearts. Thank you for being part of the journey. Join us tomorrow and every day as we continue our journey through the pages of the Bible. This is Cherie signing off for the day. Remember, you are in my prayers. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Until next time, be blessed and be a blessing.